Julio Cesar Chavez is a living legend. Chavez used his interpretation of the Mexican style of boxing to win titles in multiple weight divisions, successfully defending his title over two dozen times, and beginning his professional career with the 89 fight winning streak. He retired having fought 115 times, winning 107 of them, 86 of which came by knockout. Chavez achieved all this using a highly aggressive pressure style, made possible in part by his skillful use of head movement. It's equally fair to call him one of the most aggressive and one of the most defensive boxers of all time. So let's take a look at what made Julio Cesar Chavez the pride of Mexico. Chavez's plan was simple, cut off the ring and then brutalize his opponent from close range. Although surprisingly, Chavez was just as dangerous while closing the distance as he was crowding his opponent. And this was due to the very nature of how Chavez fought. His aggressive pressure style was built around his unusually forward posture and stance. Unlike most boxers, Chavez stood nearly completely squared up, his midline directly facing his opponents. Most fighters neglect to use this posture as it leaves them too exposed. But Chavez knew it inside and out, taking advantage of the benefits and making the downsides work for him. His footwork, head movement, and combinations all work together, seamlessly blending into one coherent, devastating style. So let's take a look at how Chavez used each of these three elements to snare his opponents, and then break down how each piece worked together to become greater than the whole. We'll start with footwork. Chavez's forward stance helped him move laterally to cut off the ring. Rather than directly chase his opponent, he instead traced a diagonal path towards the corner, widening his stance as he approached the ropes. This ensured that he could move to either side with ease, changing directions at a moment's notice to thwart his competitor's escape. Stepping wide like this left him even more open than usual, but luckily for Chavez, he had some of the best head movement ever seen in the ring. Sure, Chavez's forward posture and stance left him wide open, but it also allowed him the full range of lateral head movement to either side. If Chavez had used a more sideways narrow stance, he would have been limited to only having the full range of head movement on one side. This is great for certain kinds of fighters, but would be highly detrimental for pressure fighters like Chavez, who need to be able to safely cut off the ring in either direction. Chavez always put on a masterclass in aggressive defense, using head movement in conjunction with lateral footwork to catch opponents when they thought themselves totally safe. In the rare cases that Chavez's head movement failed him, his tight guard kept him safe, deflecting and slowing blows as he continued piling on pressure. Chavez had a surprisingly active guard, but it was easy to miss as it was very subtle. He used slight catches, parries, and bumps to deflect punches that may, at first glance, look as if they had landed clean. It's for this reason that many fans new to boxing, and even a few judges, can end up confused about who's leading in a fight. That's not to say that Chavez, like any pressure fighter, wasn't willing to take a few glancing blows to give back harder ones. But it's worth noting that in the few instances where Chavez went completely defensive, it was near impossible to land a clean shot on him. It's hard to imagine how discouraging it would be to throw over 15 punches at an opponent standing right in front of you and only have a few glancing blows make contact. Lastly, Chavez's posture also aided his ability to quickly connect with power punches from either hand. Because Chavez kept his rear shoulder near even with his lead, he was already halfway to throwing a cross, and this granted him the rare ability to consistently lead with his right. If this weren't enough of a threat, Chavez's lead hand was essentially preloaded to throw power shots already pulled back in a perfect position to throw a powerful hook, catching competitors who tried to escape to the outside. Chavez really only needed to touch his opponents to slow them down, as missed punches could turn into traps or frames. The ease with which Chavez could punch, weave, and step to either side made his style ideal for counters. Fighters who tried to punch on the back foot found themselves victim to a plethora of powerful punches. Opponents who tried to stave off Chavez with their jab found themselves victim to his best counter, as he slipped their left to cross over his right.
and eventually, the ease with which Chavez landed counters while moving forward discouraged opponents from firing off shots at all. In time, Chavez's weaving motion itself would be seen as a threat to over anxious competitors, causing them to retreat from head movement alone. And this in part helped to set up Chavez's most effective pressure fighting tactic, shifting forward into southpaw to block off his opponent's pivot and double up on his attack. From this position, Chavez could throw a powerful cross with his new rear hand, or double up with his right. This last element made Chavez's style totally symmetrical, granting him the ability to double up with whichever hand was closest regardless of which way his opponent was fleeing. In this way, Chavez's footwork, head movement, and combinations all worked together with his stance to create one of the best pressure fighting styles the world had ever seen. But although he had a score of knockouts chasing opponents, Chavez truly did his best work at close range. So let's take a look at what happened when Chavez's opponents survived the chase. Let's take a look at the legendary infighting skills of Julio Cesar Chavez. Infighting is one of the most understudied and misunderstood elements of fighting, but also one of the most important. Chavez was incredibly adept at using framing and head movement to set up superior positions and disturb his opponent's balance. One way that Chavez did this was to frame off of his opponent with his elbow. Chavez used this fairly common but multi-purpose tool to smother his opponent's guard, push him off balance, and lift his chin. In a pinch, Chavez even used it as an inverse elbow block. But most of Chavez's success at close range can be directly attributed to his masterful head movement. In infighting, changing head position can be thought of like shifting. When Chavez moved from one side of his opponent's head to the other, he was essentially changing which hand was his power hand. For instance, when moving to his opponent's right, Chavez's left hand was primed to fire. Similarly, moving to his opponent's left set up Chavez's right hand as a more powerful shot, with more angles from which to throw, coming over or underneath his opponent's guard. Meanwhile, Chavez's weak hand could be used to split his opponent's guard down the middle. In this way, Chavez could use close range head movement for defense and offense simultaneously, shifting shoulder slots to evade blows, drive home his own shots, and set up his next punch all at once. Adding in footwork on top of these tactics put Chavez in an even better position, and many will recognize this close range angle change as a technique that Vasily Lomachenko uses extensively today. Chavez also played with fire by using a third head slot, pushing his forehead right up the middle of his opponent's guard. This requires a great deal of finesse, as Chavez had to move slow enough to avoid a headbutt, but fast enough to avoid his opponent's punches. In the end, it was worth the risk, as it allowed Chavez to take the lower position, staying safely crouched down while his opponent was forced to straighten up and expose his midsection. Notice here how, when Chavez's opponent tries to weave underneath, Chavez weaves to an even lower position to straighten him back up. This is how Chavez could apply pressure with his head like a wrestler, much as the great Henry Armstrong used to do. For all these reasons, once Chavez proved he could consistently get a competitor on the ropes, the fight was pretty much over. His opponent would be subject to an endless torrent of punches, as Chavez doubled up his shots, alternating high and low, and attacked the sides to clear way for punches down the middle. It was only a matter of time until they went down or quit on their stool, and Chavez once again raised his hand in victory. Chavez should be studied by any practitioner of any style, but especially by pressure fighters. His unique blend of offense and defense can be seen in some of the best fighters today, and it's well worth taking the time to watch as many of his fights as you can find. If not to study, then to be entertained by one of the most electric fighters to ever enter the ring. Thanks for watching. Aggressive defense, the blocks, head movement, and counters of fighting will be out within a week. You can still pre-order for half price below. From the Modern Martial Artist, this has been David Christian, wishing you happy training.